then as I put the other ones on, the banjo, the banjo head will not move on me. All right, so I'm moving this up here like this. Now I'm just going to kind of push this down a little bit. At this point, this beveled area on the rim is covering up my my center line. So I can barely see a little teeny bit of it. It still looks lined up. But you can also reference from the back here where there's um, the center line. And that should directly correspond to the center of where the tailpiece is going to go. Alright, I'm going to add some more of these lugs. Now once I get a couple of these in, I'm going to just turn the banjo over. I want to make sure that the grounding wire is free because I'm going to, if I would get that cut underneath the head, I would have to start all over again and that would be a super bummer. So I've got my grounding wire, which will either ground to one of the truss rods, one of the uh, uh, tension bars, or it could come over here and connect to the flange. And uh, wherever it will touch the most metal is where the ground is going to do the most good. The Cavanjo pickup is very quiet on its own, but I have just found that different grounding, uh, AC groundings, um, can, can give you different problems. And if you have an extra uh, ground, then it just will assure you no buzz. That's what we're after. Okay, so I'm just working these guys around here. This is the most tedious part. You have to be really patient with this part because you can't really rush it. You can put a little pad underneath the banjo if, if, if it makes it easier for you to work on. Um, or you can put a, a book under there as long as it isn't anything that would hurt your banjo or your client's banjo. This is an 11 inch by uh, 11 inch diameter with a high crown head and that is standard for most banjo makers now. and has been for quite a while. So I just want to make sure that I'm careful not to compromise the health and well-being of the banjo. I move it around. <clears throat> All right, so this looks like it's our last lug. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm just going to go through here and just hand tighten these guys. I kind of keep my hand on the on the hook going to the rim so it doesn't fall out, and I find myself tightening it. Uh, into oblivion and then I have to end up untightening it and repositioning it. So everything's looking really good now. Um, I have everything hand tight. I'm not really going to make a decision yet on my ground um, until uh, for just a minute. But uh, my pickup is looking uh, nice there in the back. And, and now I get to take my palm uh, and place it right in the center of the banjo. I'm going to put my hand underneath the neck here so I don't 
put all the pressure on the tuning pegs. Here I'm pushing down and I'm just going to push down firmly to help seat the head and make sure that this is all lined up nicely. Nothing's wandered on me. Turn this back around. Take out my quarter inch key. The key is the best because I can actually feel how much tension I'm putting on the head when I use the key. And in the beginning here, it doesn't matter as much uh, how you tighten up the head. I, I like to do uh, twos. So now I'm on five and six. Go over here and do five and six. Just doing it until the, the key catches. Um, seven and eight. Seven and eight over here. Don't forget to hold the the hook nine and ten and eleven twelve okay turn that back over give it some support push down flip it back over Go back through that again. Maybe at this point, oh, we're still picking up a lot of slack. So I'm going to stick with my twos. Turn it back over. Give it a push. About right there now. Getting a lot of extra out of there. The pushing with the palm helps seat the head as well as bust out any glue that might just be residing in the head from the factory. It uh, doesn't hurt it at all. It's going to end up breaking out anyway, so this just makes it, it's kind of like stretching your strings. It just makes it so the situation goes a little bit faster. Okay, so am I getting, yeah, there, there I am. I'm finally getting to the point where these guys are catching so so now that I'm getting these to grab a little bit I'm doing the back and forth tuning technique to see where I'm at tuning wise. Ah, getting there. Give it a little push. Everything's looking really nice on this. Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth, do it the opposite way this time. You can feel when to stop the turning. And the concept on these is just like changing a tire. You, you want to make sure that you are consistent because if I tune this, it's going to weaken these. So that means I'm going to have to have these adjusted and that might weaken these. So you're trying to do just a little teeny stair step approach of tension as you go through this.